and paste into Google, I won't find that that sen exact sentence is already existing, right, on Google. Also, I can use a plagiarism checker. It's very easy. Just I copy and paste all your work into, do you understand plagiarism checker? And it tells me 70% of this is already online. 50% <coughs> of this is already online. Okay? But actually, I don't even need to do that. If I read your writing and you're using very native speaking phrases that hardly anybody knows, it's clear, right? That you didn't write that yourself. Okay? So please check your uh, report well before you send it. Okay? So we're going to discuss just briefly, we don't have, just this is uh, <coughs> about the Korean crisis. So first of all, we're going to look at these issues. So we have the case study document, which is in the readings, right? But uh, I'm just going to sum up just to do a little bit more quickly than the other ones, right? It's a little bit similar. We talked about Thailand and uh, when we were talking about balance of payments, right? But here we're looking more just focusing on the crisis part. So first issue is, did the state-led export growth strategy that had brought about spectacular success cause this financial meltdown, right? Do you understand this sentence? So Korea had success from state-led export growth strategy. Do you understand? What do you know about this, Koreans? The state helped companies to do the exports. What do you know about that? Did you study about that before? No? How did the state help the companies to make the exports? Some countries come to Korea and they study about that, right? Like, say, Egyptian person comes to Korea. How can we... Korea developed their economy very quickly in the 70s and 80s and 90s, right? They had this kind of strategy, state-led export strategy. So other countries might also want to do that, right? So what does that? What is that? Can any Korean student tell me? What did the government do Reduce to help the exports? The Reduced the regulations. Reduce the regulations. Made the lower regulations for companies, right? What else? Decreasing tax rate for companies. Decreasing tax. Anything else? Anything else they did to help the company, export company? <coughs> cheap loans, right? Government, yeah. government provided cheap loans. Okay, they had an advantageous situation <coughs> for a bit. Table, okay? State led export growth strategy. So, did this help to cause the financial meltdown, help to cause the crisis? Number two issue we're going to think about, what the role of foreign investors. We just talked about investors, right? What was their role? By putting in short-term money, you understand short-term money? Into Korea's partly and unevenly liberalized financial system. So Korea's financial system not fully open, right? And then the IMF. Do you think the IMF helped Korea to recover, or did it just help the foreign investors to get their money back? Do you understand bailout? Yes. Bailout is we're in the ship, and we use the bail to throw out the water. Okay? So bailout means helping, saving. We bail the water out of the ship, we're saving somebody. Okay? Stopping the ship from sinking. So were they saving the foreign investors, or were they trying to help Korea recover? So we're going to think about those three issues. So, um, first of all, in the 80s, Korea was a large debtor. In the early 80s, it had a big debt. Do you understand debt? Do you know this President Chun? President Chun? Is that pronunciation correct? Chun? 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 President Chun undertook some... Uh, Stabilization program backed by the IMF because of the large debt, right? Like Greece, maybe at the moment. Okay, the IMF made similar 
uh, su suggestion to Greece, right? To restore fiscal balance, so spending, cut the, make the government income higher than the government spending. He froze the public sector wage. Do you understand freezing the wages? So freezing the wages. He stopped hiring any new government employees. Okay, so in Greece, they reduced public sector wages. They also stopped hiring and fired some public sector employees. Okay? In Korea, they purged means fired. You understand fired? Yes. Public sector workers. Okay? He also made a, a wage freeze in general on the economy. So even for private companies, a wage freeze and reduced the power of the labor union. So like supply side, supply side policy, right? By the IMF. So this was successful in Korea. The budget deficit, they had a budget deficit spending more than they got, was eliminated in the second half of the 80s. GDP started to grow at 6% from 1980 to 1985. So this is what they hope will happen in Greece, okay? That because of these cuts in the public sector, investor confidence is improved, the supply side thinking, right? Then people invest more in the economy, and uh, we get some uh, budget surplus and GDP growth and exports. Exports started to grow in Korea 16% from 1980 to 1986. So we talk about structural reforms. Do you understand structural reforms? Yes. Reform, Kyeok. What is structural reform in Korean? Koju, Kyeok. Okay. So he made those ones to liberalize trade, privatize banks, and reduce the weight of the tables. Okay? So again, we can see the United States here. The United States started to get big deficits with Korea. So it pressurized the government to liberalize. Do you understand liberalize? We saw Thailand, a lot of India, a lot of countries liberalized in the late 80s and early 90s. It means open their economy to investment and trade. So here we can see some examples. Uh, Korean firms were allowed to make more FDI. Institutional investors, investors were allowed to buy the stocks, foreign stocks. Banks were authorized to issue bonds in foreign currencies in 1990. Okay? So the bank issues the bond in the foreign currency. Korean bank is getting a loan in US dollars. Okay? What is the bank going to do with the money? Why, why, did, why would a bank get a loan in US dollars in the first place instead of Korean won? Their interest rate is lower. Interest rate is lower, much lower in the US, right? Maybe their currency will get stronger, but their interest rate is lower, right? What are they going to do after they get the loan from the US? Why don't they sit in the dollars, have a big party with their friends? No. Try playing with the dollars. I've got US dollars, look! They borrow the money to many companies. Lend the money to the companies in Korea, right? So, uh, we saw one of the problems here is they can get the short term bond, just six month bond, but lend to the Korean company for 10 years or 15 years, right? So, it can be problematic. So, more direct investment by foreigners in Korea, okay? Uh, so, there used to be that foreign companies had to buy so much of their inputs locally, okay? But change this kind of regulation. Stock, Korean stock market open to foreigners, but no individual foreigner could own more than 3% of the Korean company. Okay, and the total foreign ownership of a company, no more than 10%. Uh, do you know Kim Young san Yes. Yeah. Passed away just two weeks ago. Yeah. 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 So he was the president from 1993 to 1997. So we'll talk about under his uh, rule, right? So he immediately he was launched an anti-corruption campaign uh, in the public and the private sector. He bought the Chebo leaders on the TV to expose their corrupt practices. He put bankers in jail. We tried to clamp down on corruption at the start. Uh, he made 
easier for foreign direct investment and for foreign firms to invest in Korea. So investors were now allowed to purchase 7% of Korean companies, up from 3%. So foreigners can now buy more stocks in Korea. Okay, the currency was allowed to fluctuate. So the currency was being held against the US dollar. Okay? But now it's allowed to fluctuate up to 2.5% uh, a day by 1997. Okay? So the external financial flow, the money coming in and out of the country, was liberalized. For example, Korean firms were allowed to take out foreign loans to finance imports of capital goods. Korean companies could issue bonds in foreign currencies without seeking government permission. We saw this similar to Thailand. Banks went abroad. Banks and financial institutions, they were allowed to set up foreign branches and borrow overseas. Okay, so we have Korean banks setting up. They go to another country. Here they're in Korea. They go and set up in another country. Okay, in the US, let's say. They get the dollars, bring the dollars back to their branch in Korea, and they lend the money to the company. Okay? So we're getting a lot of debt, right? In dollars. Do you understand? Through the banking system. Bank, bank goes to the other country, gets a loan in the foreign currency, gives it to the local companies. But local companies were also able to get lent loans themselves in the foreign currencies. So, is this opening up or liberalizing? Okay, uh, the Kim government had allowed the real exchange rate to appreciate by about 15%, and the trade de deficit had risen sharply in 1996. So, because of they were allowing the exchange rate to fluctuate more, it allowed the, ex the exchange rate to appreciate. What effect do you think that had on the economy? Stronger exchange rate. 15% appreciation against the dollar. What do you think happened to Korean exports to the US? Less exports. Less exports, right? Korean currency gets stronger. Korean exports are more expensive in the US. Okay? So the trade deficit started to rise. So we can look at some of the. Uh, We can look at in the next class in the exhibits, right? But, uh, the price of the country's main export, memory chips, collapsed. So at the time, Korea was exporting a lot of memory chips, and the average unit price went from $50 to $455. That was just a change in technology. Do you understand? It became a lot easier to make memory chips because of new technology. So Taiwan, other countries could also make the memory chip. So the price of memory chips has gone down a lot. Like let's say oil with Russia, right? The price goes down a lot. Or another country, their export price goes down a lot. So Korea was memory chips. Okay, so we can see that there's some trigger, like the real estate crisis, which starts to cause a problem for the banks. Then the banks get into trouble. Then we get worse problem, okay? So Korean banks had borrowed overseas short term, but lent money to the tables to finance long term. So here they go to the US, they get a six month bond. Do you understand, six month bond? When do they need to pay back the money, the dollars? Oh, six months, very good. <laughs> they come back to Korea, they, lend the they have the money, they have the cash, right? Let's say they get 10 million, 10 million dollars, right? They come back to Korea, they lend the $10 million to the table. But they tell them, don't pay me back for 10 years. Okay? Do you understand? So they're getting money year short term and lending long term. Does that seem a little bit dangerous? Could it be problematic? 
they expect, what they expect here is that the US investor is going to roll over the bond. Do you understand roll over? Roll over means they're not going to take their money back. They're not going to ask for their money back after six months, right? They're going to continue and continue the next one and the next one and the next one. So, we can see that we have this kind of situation. Then the companies are having some problem. So, uh, the growth was slowing down in 1996. So Kim thought he had to, plus eight, keep the tables happy because they're very important for the economy. So he didn't ask them to reduce their debt to equity ratio. So at the time, Korean companies had a very high debt to equity ratio because of this history. The government provided cheap loans to the companies. Are the companies going to raise more money from debt or equity? They have government subsidies loans. Right? Do you understand subsidized? Subsidized? So cheap <coughs> loans, right? Even though the government this finished at the late 80s, right? But the, they still had a lot of debt and the banks were still providing. So they had quite high debt to equity ratio, like 400%. Do you understand debt to equity ratio? Hmm? Somebody who studied financial management? It means that they have four parts debt for one part equity, right? Yes. So it means that we're going to have 80% of our company is financed by debt, 20% by equity, okay? Yes. That is going to be a 400% debt to equity ratio. Okay, debt is 400% higher than equity. So companies and tables had a lot of debt, financed by a lot of debt. So the president wanted to re make them reduce their debt to equity ratio, but he decided not to because they had some problem. Okay, they also eased the funding restrictions on the table, so tables could get more loans, and they approved the non-bank -bank financial institutions, so other areas where they could get loans. So merchant banks increased from 6 to 30. So these were other four sources of funds that the companies could get loans from. So the, their debt to equity ratio was much higher than Japanese or American companies. Uh, supervision of the financial system was lax. Do you understand lax supervision? Here you talked about lower regulation, right? We saw in Ireland bad regulation in the financial crisis. UK, right? So also we had lax regulation in Korea. So, for example, the firms took out loans from financial institutions outside of the normal system, and there wasn't much supervision. So they're getting really large debt to equity uh, ratio. So, because of this, Korea, this. Uh, FDI was not big, right? But the financial flows, like the loans, was big. Do you understand? So FDI, foreigners investing in Korea were not investing much in FDI. They were giving loans and buying equity, but mainly loans, okay? So which is easier to get out, if you invest in FDI or you invest in just loans? Which is easier, short-term loan? or you buy a factory in Korea? Which is easier to get out of Korea? Short-term loan, right? If you buy a factory, FDI in Korea, it's not easy to change your money and just leave Korea. You invested in the factory, you built a business, that's FDI, right? Yes. You made a relationship, you want to stay there for the long term. But if you give just a short-term loan, you're not, it's not the same as FDI. Not the same situation, okay? So Korea didn't have much FDI, but they had this kind of, we call financial flow. Money is flowing easily. So Korea started to rely on this foreign capital. But the problem is, this can flow out very quickly. Came in very quickly, can go out very quickly. So over 60% of the inflows were short term, six months or less. Okay? Short term bonds rose from the foreign reserves. 72% to 280%. So the banks and the financial institutions borrowed heavily through their overseas branches. The overseas branch here, a lot of borrowing, a lot of money back to Korea. Outside the Korean supervision. 
So $50 billion by 1996, according to the OECD study. So the Thai, we get to the crisis situation, okay? The Thai bank collapsed. We talked about the Thai economy in July 1997, okay? In Korea, in October, the government devalued the won. In November, things started to go badly, okay? Uh, 1997. The Minister of Finance said, it's unthinkable. How do you say unthinkable in Korean? They translated what he said from Korean to English. So what did he say in Korean? Hmm? Well, it's unthinkable to all the IMS, right? <laughs> Here he said there was some speculative foreign press articles. So again, the politicians like to blame the like speculators or investors, right? Or pessimism. So in this case, he's, he's saying just people are saying that Korean economy is bad, but it's not really. Okay? And he said just the speculators are putting some pressure on the currency. But the, tra the problem is that the facts were speaking otherwise, right? Korea had a large trade deficit. Now Korea has a trade surplus, right? Then it had a trade deficit. The stock market fell 28%. And eight of the 30 largest chaebols were either bankrupt or under big pressure. Okay? We talked about the rating agency. The rating agency downgraded Korea. Foreign banks began to demand higher interest rates. So I'll give you the money again for six months, but you need to pay me a much higher interest rate. Okay? Korean foreign exchange reserves went down a lot, running out of the foreign exchange reserves. December the 3rd, the government agreed to the IMF bailout. 55 billion uh, loan package. Okay? So obviously the uh, foreigners are going to be allowed to uh, enter the Korean economy more. IMF is going to ask for liberalization. So before, foreigners could only own 7% of the Korean company. The IMF says now one foreigner can own 55% of this company. Okay? And then up to 100% by the end of the year. So foreigners can basically buy all of the Korean companies okay, if they want. Foreign banks would be allowed to buy Korean banks. So given these conditions, we can give you a loan. Okay, the Bank of Korea had to be made independent. So we need an independent central bank. Uh, we need to strengthen the regulations, make a stronger regulation. Okay? Merchant banks with the worst loans have to be closed. All right, so we have to make the Korean economy more transparent. You understand transparent? Clear, easy to see what people are doing. This kind of subsidies, subsidies for helping the exporting company has to end. Okay. And uh, controversial, one reason why Korea doesn't have strong labor law today, IMF changed, asked the government to change some labor legislation to help the companies to fire people more easily. So on December the 18th, Kim dae jong won the presidency, just about. So he was formerly a prisoner, and he was used to straight talk. Do you understand straight talk? Talking like just saying exactly things, right? So this is not <coughs> what politicians do usually. Usually politicians are more smooth talkers than straight talkers. Ask them a question, they won't answer your question, okay? So he declared at a press conference, we have no money. We don't know whether we'll default tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I'm totally flabbergasted. Do you understand flabbergasted? Shocked. What do you think he said in Korean? Can you translate this into Korean? I'm sure he said in Korean and they translate to English. So translate, what did he say in Korean? Tony up, Saya? What's the next one? Say loudly, please. Don't know. Whether we'll default. Do you understand default? Yes. How do you say default in Korean? <laughs> Is that just making a mistake? If you're playing gold stop, somebody says, ah, man, yes, Is that the same word for default? 
Okay. Default means the government is not going to pay back the debt. Okay, so I'm totally flabbergasted. How do you say flabbergasted in Korean? Shocked? Hmm? Okay, do you think that's a good idea for the president to say that to all the investors? No. Right? Earlier we talked about the gray area and the white area and the black area, right? So maybe gray is maybe close to the black area, but this is going to make it even worse. Okay? So what happens? His statement set up panic amongst investors. Okay? And bankers. The exchange rate was one dollar to one two three five. It depreciated to one nine six two just the next day or in two days. So we can see the importance of the confidence for the investors. Okay? If we come along and make a statement like this, investors is going to lose their confidence and panic. Do some herding. Right? And uh, are the investors acting rationally or panicking? When people panic, is that acting rationally or irrationally? Irrationally, right? So this, this caused the investors to... So we have to understand that investors are not rational people all the time. So we shouldn't try to say something which will make them panic. Okay? Interest rate doubled in Korea during December. So inflation is going to go up, interest rate is going to follow. Okay? So behind the scenes on Christmas Eve, US Treasury Secretary, very important position in the world, Minister of Finance in the US, has big influence on the IMF. Okay? Uh, at that time, Robert Rubin, the Under Secretary Lawrence. Have you ever heard of Larry Summers, former president of <coughs> Harvard University? Larry Summers, famous economist. Okay, they all told the U.S. banks, "You have to roll over Korea's debt." We talked about roll over. Okay, so the banks are thinking about taking all their money back. U.S. banks take all the money back, right? But the Ministry of Finance in the US met the bankers and he told them, you have to roll over Korea's debt. You have to keep giving them. Don't take back the bonds. Okay? The banks agreed. Why? Sophisticated New York bankers understanding easily. Okay? Because they understand that if they start to take away, take back their money, it's going to make the crisis even worse, and in the end they might lose even more money. Okay? You understand? So if they all agree together not to take back their money, then this is going to create confidence to help Korea in the crisis. Okay? But if we all panic and start, I start taking out my money, it can cause the contagion. The other banks are going to take out their money. Okay? Do you understand that idea? So they all agree to roll over together the bonds. Uh, the British banks also promised the same cooperation, and the G7 countries made the same cooperation. Okay? <coughs> then, JP Morgan, US Bank, was interested in buying. They were going to buy the Korean Bank. <coughs> so, here we have some opinions of two Nobel, a Nobel laureate, Milton Friedman. He said that IMF was hurting the countries banks were lending to and benefiting the foreigners who lent to them. And also, Jeffrey Sachs, do you know Jeffrey Sachs? Right, famous economist. Asia would have been better if the IMF had never set foot in these countries, okay? So we had uh, economists, like nowadays with Greece, complaining, right? Saying the government policy is wrong, or the IMF policy is wrong, and it's just helping the uh, foreign lenders, okay? Because the IMF is going to come in, and the IMF is going to give a loan to the government, but the IMF is going to say, you need to use this money to pay back the foreign lenders, too. So, we had these uh, different opinions. So then let's look back at our issue and discuss uh, the issue that we mentioned at the start of the class. So we're not going to do, this one was more chronological, we just looked through a chronological order, right? So we're just going to discuss the issues about your opinion. So we talked about the government supporting, subsidizing, providing cheap loans, having low regulation and low tax on the companies, okay? Do you think that this government supporting the companies for exports 
We talked about the high debt to equity ratio in the companies, right? The government not regulating this problem, okay? Because they thought the company is very important to the economy, okay? So supporting this debt situation. So discuss with your partner about the first issue. Do you think the state trying to support the exports help to cause the crisis in some way? Or how would that help to cause the crisis? Do you understand the question? So discuss with your partner. Number one question. We discussed about here, right? No regulation, no tax, cheap loans for the companies, equals high debt to equity ratio. A lot of debt. Companies had a lot of debt. For while you're discussing that, I'm going to call the attendance. Wang Dex one. Chao Long Yong. Lee Kang Guan. Mo Wei Wei. Kim Ye Ran. Choi Jae Hun. Ho Yong Shin. Moon Ju Wan. Kim Ah Rong. Kim Ye Ji. Min Nook Ki. Yun Sang Ho. Yes. Kim Ye Rong. Choi Jae Nook. Kim Gong Joo, Moon Ye Won, Moon Ye Won, Liu Eun Son, Lee Yong Ji, Choi So Young, Choi Tae Min, Choi Wei Jung, Yang Young Suk, Lee Jae Gong, Lee Ji Soo. Uh, Chang Yi. Yes. How are we move? <laughs> Sanya and Sanya. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Moon Ji Won, what do you think about the number one question? What do you mean? <coughs> well, first of all, how how did the state-led export strategy cause some problems? problem did that cause? What did the companies have too much of? What did the company have too much of compared to other countries? Mm -hmm. 
Does anybody know? Giving too much co benefits to companies. Yeah, so what did that cause? What did the companies have too much of? Debt, right? Debt to equity ratio, 400%. Do you understand debt to equity ratio? We already explained. Yes. Yeah. You study financial management, you should understand. Yes, yes. What is a healthy debt to equity ratio? One, 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 one. one to one, 50% debt, 50% equity, right? Yeah. Or maybe maximum 60%, 70% debt, 30% equity. <coughs> but 80% debt and 20% equity is kind of risky. Okay, it's a lot of debt. What's the problem with a lot of debt? Could be easier to be bankrupt, right? Do you understand? Yes. If you start a restaurant with a big loan, 80% loan and 20% of your own money, you have a much higher chance of bankruptcy than if you start the restaurant with 100% of your money. You have to pay the interest back on the debt, whether you're making profit or not. Okay? If the interest goes up on your debt, you're going to have a problem. So very high debt. Green company, because of the export strategy, the government gave them cheap loans originally okay, to help them. They didn't regulate them getting loans, so they ended up with very high debt in the green companies. <coughs> and let's discuss the number two. So what role had foreign investors? in the crisis by pouring short-term capital into Korea's financial system. So I'll discuss the role of the foreign investors in the crisis in Korea. Do you understand role? investments were they doing in Korea? What kind of investment were the foreigners doing in Korea? Were they buying land? Were they buying factories? Or were they lending money to Korean companies and Korean banks? What kind of investment were foreigners doing? <coughs> Foreign direct investment? Were they doing a lot of foreign direct investment? Do you understand foreign direct investment? Yeah. Were, were foreigners doing a lot of foreign direct investment or not a lot of foreign direct investment? Not a lot. So what kind of investment were they doing in Korea? They're lending money. Lending money? Yeah. How was that system working? Were they coming to Korea and lending money? No. Well, how did that system work? Who went where? Korean banks went to the foreign countries and set up branches, just like Thailand, okay? They were allowed to do that and get the loans from the foreign countries, okay? So was this a long-term loan or short-term loan, Kim Maron? Foreigners, were they making short-term loans or long-term loans? Short-term loans. So do you think this was a problem in the crisis or not a problem? 
Why? <coughs> Why was it a problem that they were, instead of doing FDI, they were just lending money? And they weren't lending money for the long term, they were just lending money for the short term. Why is that a problem? Don't know. Can anybody tell me why that's a problem? So what? We're talking about the foreign investors. They're lending money to Korea in the short term, right? Why is that a problem for Korea? They can. Korea needs a long term. Yes, it can come in and out very fast. If you give a long-term loan, can they take out the money quickly? No, they gave you a loan for 10 years. You're going to pay them back after 10 years. Can they say after one year, actually, I want my money back now? Can they do that? No. No, they have to leave it there for 10 years, right? But there's just short-term money. They can say, give me back your mo the money now, right? Or else you're bankrupt, okay? So we had this problem. And then we have number three, which is just this can still be debated by economists, but we don't have time to discuss this one now, right? But people have their own opinion, whether the IMF helps Korea or was actually a problem, okay? So then, uh, let's finish there for today. If you have any questions, then you can ask me. Then I'll see you next week. We have on the Geisha Tan the time for your presentation, right? So you need to come to the class to watch the presentation of the other group. Okay, so you need to come on Wednesday and Friday. Please remember to send me by email today the final report. Also, uh, which students in this class is graduating this semester? You're graduating. Anybody else?